Please stand for the processional.
That's right. Please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the graduation ceremony for the class of 2019. We celebrate today both the completion of your undergraduate or graduate degree, but also the beginning of the next chapter of your lives as graduates. While no one can see the future that God intends for each of you, we now entrust you to his care, confident that if you continue to live your life in surrender to his mercy and direction, then you're in for an adventure that is beyond imagining. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote, only Jesus who bids us follow him knows the journey's end, but we know that it will be a road of boundless mercy. Commencement represents a traditional rite of passage occurring at every college and university across the country. It's our honor this afternoon, and, and it was in this ceremony this morning, to commission 556 graduates for a spirit-empowered life of Christ-centered leadership and service. This occasion is both a joyful celebration and a sacred moment in a place that has been consecrated for God's glory. The Mariner's Church family not only makes us feel so welcome on campus at commencement, but with open arms to make space for Vanguard students and graduates to serve, uh, to serve as interns and on staff in ministry leadership positions. Please join me in expressing our sincere gratitude for the generous hospitality of Mariner's Church. Thank you, Pastor Eric and Mariner's. To the gathered family members and, and friends of the class of 2019, I want to thank each of you on behalf of the graduates, faculty, staff, administration, and trustees of Vanguard University for being here to share in this significant event. These graduates are here today because of the prayer and encouragement, sacrifice and support that you have given them during the pursuit of their degree. This also is your day to celebrate, and we applaud you. Let's do that right now. They wouldn't be here without you. <laughs> Graduates of the class of 2019, we do applaud you. We have donned our formal academic regalia as symbols of our calling and to celebrate your achievement. Paul wrote in his prayers for the Ephesians, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. These are my prayers for you as well. My enduring desire for each one of you is that his love will captivate your heart, that his spirit will transform you into his image, that his strength will be perfected in your weakness, and that you will use your gifts and this preparation for his glory. And so now, let's stand together for the invocation. How many love Jesus today? Raise your hand. Keep that hand raised. Keep that hand raised and point it towards these graduates as we ask God's blessing upon them. Would you bow in prayer with me? Thank you, Lord, for this special day. We are thankful for the graduates, their families and friends who join us in the celebration of this tremendous accomplishment of self-sacrifice, discipline and determination that has led them to this graduation day. We are thankful for our Vanguard faculty, staff, administrators who have challenged, cared for and shaped these graduates along their academic journey. What a great gift from you 
that they have been able to learn from anointed experts and teachers in their chosen fields and now ready to go into the world and make a difference for you. The skills they have developed here will be the foundation of which they will build their successful ministries, careers, and lives. May these graduates continue to, to be lifelong learners who acknowledge their need to continually discover more about you, the giver of all knowledge and truth. Teach us and teach our graduates to pray faithfully, to know and listen to your voice. Fill them with thankfulness, love, humility, and faith. Give them the courage and discernment to say no to the things that would try to dissuade them from your perfect will for their lives. Send them strong Christian friends and spouses. Show them the joys of being generous and serving others. Keep them ever close to their families and open to the wise counselor of anointed elders. Help them to learn from their mistakes and failures. Guide them in every step they take. Lord, as you have promised in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have of you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We claim that promise for each one of these graduates today. And acknowledge right now that regardless of their achievements that will come their way, real contentment and real happiness is only found in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you, God. You did your best when you created us. You did your best when you sent your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for us. Now help us do our best for you. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Turn to that neighbor, shake their hand, and say congratulations, and then you may be seated. Congratulations, class of 2019. <laughs> On behalf of the Vanguard University Board of Trustees, it is my honor and privilege to congratulate you today for an amazing accomplishment well deserved. Today, you join with the group of 34% of adults in America who have earned a bachelor's degree, and some of you today join the group even smaller yet of 9% of adults in America that have earned a master's degree. Way to go. We celebrate with you and we applaud your accomplishments. Let's do that, shall we? As a board, we have committed ourselves to the purpose of Vanguard University to pursue knowledge, cultivate character, deepen faith, and equip men and women for a spirit-empowered life of Christ-centered leadership and service, and to embrace and preserve Vanguard's core values of truth, virtue, and service. We have pledged ourselves to pray for you, and we will continue to pray God's blessing and direction and strength upon your lives. Graduates, the world needs you. It needs your passion, and it needs your compassion. It needs your skills and your intellect and your abilities. But most of all, it needs your light, the light of Jesus Christ. So as you graduate, be a difference maker. Be a world changer. Bring your influence to the table and let your light shine. So wherever you go and whatever you do, whether you teach in a class 
whether you start your own business, whether you choose to go on for even more education, or whether you choose to serve in a third world country, whatever you do, wherever you go, may your faith in Christ continue to grow and the love that God has given you as it has transformed your life, may it transform the lives of each and every person in your world. Today we say, God bless you, class of 2019. It has been the tradition of the chair of the board of trustees most recently to get a selfie with the graduating class. And I, for one, want to keep that tradition going. So, on the count of three, I need your biggest cheer, and we're going to capture this moment here in front of us. Student speakers, yes, they need to come down. We did this this morning. Come on down, come on down. Good catch, thank you. Okay, on the count of three, we'll get them in here. Keep coming in, keep coming in. There we go. Oh, you're looking good. On the count of three, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Excellent. As we continue our celebration, please stand, each and every one of you, with me and join the Vanguard Singers and Band as we sing songs of praise and adoration. Encourage our graduates as well as to the glory of God. Let's lift our voices as we sing Cornerstone and Mighty to Save.
together. Lord, I need you. Lord, I come. I confess. Let's sing together. Lord, I come. I confess. Just kidding, please stand <laughs> for the reading of God's word. This is from Philippians 4, 6 through 7. This was selected by the graduating seniors of the undergraduate college as the scripture for all commencement ceremonies. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now you may be seated. And now stand. No, kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I love it. It's actually so good to see. I mean, the, the lights are bright, but it's so good to see the faces of so many you know, many of you I don't know, and we would have had maybe a handshake or something along the way, but, uh, and then some that I've known, known for a long time, uh, completing your degrees and graduating, 
but understand that uh, I've been cheering for you every step of the way. Um, I, I know personally, and the people that are surrounding you here, the people that have dedicated their lives to preparing you for yours, uh, we know what a big deal this is. And what a big deal it is for the families that have cheered you on as well. But what a big deal it is to finish the race and this next step and, and where God's taken you. You know, there's a different, there's a different tone and there's a different, um, and rightly so, and there's a different kind of vibe to the undergraduate, um, the traditional undergraduate um, uh, ceremony. And that's because the eight, for 18 to 22 year olds, um, their whole life is, is ahead of them in many ways. And while sometimes it's breathtaking, some of the damages and the experience, life experiences that 18 year olds bring to their undergraduate experience, um, by the time one gets to their uh, professional studies degree, to their graduate degree, they've accumulated family and life and disappointments and victories. And there are many things that would stand in the way of you being where you are. I just want you to know, I couldn't be more proud of you. We couldn't be more proud of you. And it's really our privilege to be here with you. <laughs> it is now my privilege to introduce our commencement speaker, Captain Catherine Santiago. A, a 2009 Vanguard University graduate, Captain Santiago currently serves as a judge advocate and legal instructor for the United States Air Force Special Investigations Academy. Amen. <laughs> Located at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in Glencoe, uh, Glencoe, Georgia. She is also a senior instructor to the Fletzi Legal Division. In these roles, she supports the organization's missions of providing investigative counterintelligence training and education uh, to support the AFOSI, U.S. Air Force members, investigators, the Department of Defense, and over 90 agencies. Captain Santiago previously served as a Special Victims Counsel at Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana, where she provided independent legal representation and counsel to victims of sexual assault through the military justice process. Prior to that, Captain Santiago served as the Chief of Military Justice at Fairchild Air Force Base in Washington, where she advised commanders on the fair administration of justice. Throughout her career, Captain Santiago has been lauded as a fierce prosecutor. She has tried misdemeanor and felony level offenses in military courts martial, notably trying several sexual assaults, domestic violence, DUI, drug and arson cases, among others, along with an English degree from Vanguard University. Woohoo! That's right, that's right. Captain Santiago holds a Juris Doctorate from the University of Denver Sturm College of Law and entered active duty in January 2014 after direct commission as an Air Force Judge Advocate. She is admitted to practice law before the Supreme Courts of Colorado, the Air Force Court of Criminal Appeals, and the United States Court of Criminal Appeals for the Armed Forces. And she is, a qualified, uh, she is qualified and certified under two prestigious uniform codes of military justice. Class of 2019, family and friends, please join me in welcoming our commencement speaker, an alumna with whom we take great pride having received the 2018 Young Alumnus of the Year Award, Captain Catherine Santiago. Good evening, hello everyone, and congratulations, class. Congratulations, graduates. This is such a wonderful time to celebrate all of your accomplishments, and I'm so excited to be here with you, and I'm humbled by you. Um, let me begin with a few thank yous. First, a big thank you to President Beals. Thank you for the invite to speak here and for my introduction, and more importantly, I want to thank you for being a diligent steward with the care and trust of our university. Your work with the support of the board has been so crucial in establishing a strong legacy for Vanguard. And graduates, I just want to take a moment to recognize something important. This legacy that I just mentioned, you are a part of that. In a couple of minutes, you're going to walk across the stage, shake Dr. Beal's hand, receive your degrees, your diplomas, and at that moment, you'll become an alumnus. I hope you take pride in that, and I pray that you realize the responsibility that comes with it. Be a beacon to others, share what you can, and be generous with your time and with your hearts. And I hope that you will help others build their story here too. I want to give a big thanks to all of the faculty and staff that are here with us today. Thank you for investing in the lives of our graduates. Thank you for giving so much of yourselves and for always being faithful to God's calling in your lives. 
and I want to thank all of the family and the friends and the co-workers that are here today supporting all of our graduates. Truly, no one succeeds alone, and each and every single one of us is here because of God's grace and provision and because of all of the help we've received, and we stand on the shoulders of those who have come before us. So, I want to give a big thanks to the parents who have encouraged the students to press when things got difficult. A thank you to the grandparents who show up for the big moments. And a thank you to the children and to the grandchildren of our graduates. Thank you for your patience, for your understanding that allowed your graduate to pursue their dreams. Families and friends, all of your love and generosity has culminated in this big day. So class, I want you to go ahead and stand up, find your squad in your cheering section, give them a wave and a kiss, and let's give them a round of applause. Now lastly, I want to thank you, all of the graduates, to the women and men that make up this graduating class. Thank you for striving for excellence, for being lifelong learners. Thank you for challenging yourselves to push beyond your own comfort zones, for opening your hearts to new experiences, for investing in the lives of others, and for investing in your own life. You are all brilliant, and I know this entire room is so entirely proud of you. Now, I know that you are all ready to walk across the stage and to start celebrating, so I will keep it short. All right. Now, I honestly believe that all of you are world changers, but in order to go out and change the world, you have to leave the home that you've created here over the past several years, or the situation that you've created and allowed for the past several years. That may be difficult and even intimidating, but that is all a part of your ever-growing story. I understand the mixed emotions that may come with graduation. The day that I graduated from Vanguard, my family came to pack up my apartment. I moved to a different state. I went to law school and then immediately commissioned into the Air Force as an officer. So my graduation day was actually the last day I was a resident of this state. And my service to this country has taken me all across the world, literally. I have been stationed in multiple states and tried cases everywhere from Nebraska to New Jersey, all the way to Korea. And throughout my time in service, there have been days, months, and even years when I've been away from all of the people and the places that were familiar to me. But Vanguard has always been home. So I wanna tell you to take courage, be resolute in the calling that God has for you, and know that because you have a home here at Vanguard, you have people that care for you, that will pray with you, and that will support you when you need it the most. Our world today needs you to be courageous. It's easy to become discouraged. It's easy to turn on the news and feel as though things are hopeless or just too broken, but that is exactly why you are so needed out in our communities and out in the world. There are people in this room that are going off to do amazing things, to be business entrepreneurs, scholars, pastors, politicians, worship leaders, maybe lawyers, teachers, medics, and maybe even airmen, soldiers, sailors, or Marines. Know that wherever you go after today, the home that you have created here and the friendships that you have invested in and the mentors that you have learned from will still be here for you. And I pray that this promise of home gives you the courage that you're going to need. I'm so honored to be here today, and I'm so inspired by this class. Like many of you, I had a family as I was going through law school, and when I was going through college, I was the first, one of the first in my family to go to college, and I was the first to go to law school. And despite all of the challenges that comes along with that, my family and my community always encouraged me to get an education. So I know that my education and your education is going to break down barriers and open doors. But I want to caution you and encourage you that those doors may open up because of the degree you have earned, but it takes courage to actually walk through those doors, and you have to be zealous in order to effectuate real change once you are on the other side. So in many ways, your work is just beginning. I want to leave you with two pieces of advice as you embark on all that God has ahead for you. This advice is personal to me as they are lessons that I have learned since I graduated from Vanguard. The first lesson has to do with gratitude. 
and this lesson begins with a hero's story. I once had the opportunity to hear from Lieutenant Colonel Henry Fowler, who is a retiree from the United States Air Force. During the Vietnam War, Colonel Fowler served as a fighter pilot flying the F-4. Colonel Fowler's story is near and dear to my heart because he is a hero in his own right, but also because this pilot later went on to be a military attorney or a JAG, just like me, which is pretty awesome. On Easter Sunday in March of 1967, when Colonel Fowler was out patrolling the skies, his aircraft was shot down over North Vietnam. As he ejected from the plane, he suffered severe back injuries from the force of the thrust. And when he landed on the ground, he was captured and taken as a prisoner of war. Colonel Fowler was a prisoner of war for 2,157 days. He described his cell as being no larger than a common bathroom. The cell had no window, he had no toilet, no bed, no hot water, and no shoes. He was never allowed to write home, and he was denied the necessities for basic hygiene. Colonel Fowler survived all of that, and he was released during Operation Homecoming in 1973. When I heard Colonel Fowler speak about what had happened to him, he talked a lot about what it took to survive. And he mentioned how it was his faith that had carried him through. When Colonel Fowler talked about how he dealt with being a POW or a prisoner of war in those conditions, he told us how even though his captors had tried to isolate the prisoners, he and the other prisoners of war worked to create their own community. In fact, they invented an entire language, a secret code consisting of taps and knocks that allowed them to communicate and support each other. And the thing that has stuck with me most from Colonel Fowler's remarks is that he said that his experience, that being a prisoner of war was valuable to him. He said he obviously wasn't grateful when his plane was shot down, but he was grateful for what he went through because it allowed him to carry on his Christian mission. What happened to him just made him more grateful for the things that God had given him, and what a testimony. Over the past several years, my military service has been focused in the area of criminal justice and law enforcement. I sometimes joke like that my job is just like the TV show NCIS, but better because it's the Air Force. <laughs> but all jokes aside, working as a prosecutor and as a victim's rights attorney, I've seen a lot of hard cases. I've tried cases and seen the hurt in the victims of domestic violence or in terrible child abuse. The cases were dark and they have been heartbreaking and the weight and the responsibility of trying to find justice for those victims has been heavy. And there have been nights when my work has most certainly come home with me and I have shared in that pain and heartbreak. But I had to press because I wanted to be a voice for those who had been victimized. And in the pursuit of justice, I've had to spend a lot of time away from my home, from my husband and from my son. And I have been overwhelmed and I have been tested. And despite all of that, I am learning to be grateful, grateful for my Christian mission. And that's my hope for you, that no matter the darkness or the difficulties you might face, that you would be grateful. Be grateful that you are being used to be the hands and feet of God in whatever you are called to do. And like Colonel Fowler, I would pray that you would take all of the good in and let every hard thing be used for your Christian mission. The second piece of advice I have for you is to have grit. The idea of grit can have a lot of different meanings for different people, but for me, I take it as the ability to bear down in the face of obstacles, to hold steady in the chaos, and to be courageous when duty calls. Earlier this year, I had the absolute pleasure of being at the Alumni Awards Chapel at Vanguard, and in chapel, I was asked about what my experience has been like in a male-dominated career field both in the military and now in law enforcement. And my answer today is the same. And I really think this applies to everyone in all situations. You can do great things if you have a servant's heart and if you have grit. I learned about the concept of grit from Major Heather Lucky Penny. Lucky is her call sign. I was able to hear Lucky speak once and her words have made such an impact on me. Lucky was an Air National Guard fighter, or fighter pilot who was on the runway at, at Andrews Air Force Base on the day that our country was attacked on 9-11. On 9-11, terrorists hijacked commercial airliners and attacked us here at home. And on that day, we were unprepared for a domestic attack. We didn't see it coming. And as crazy as it sounds now, we didn't have air support ready to respond to that attack. So our response was slow and chaotic. At the time of the attacks, Major Penny had access to a plane, but the plane was unarmed and no one really knew who could give her orders or authorize her to go up into the sky. 
That day, the towers were hit faster than we could arm our planes. So when Lucky and her commanding officer were finally authorized to go wheels up, they took off in their jets without any ammunition and without any bombs. Major Penny said that as she was going into the cockpit, she realized that in order to save lives, in order to protect the lives of people down below, she may have to make the ultimate sacrifice. She remembers thinking that if another attack was underway, if another plane was going to attack civilians, she wouldn't be able to shoot that other plane down. She would have to ram it. Even so, she hopped into that plane and she patrolled our skies for as long as that plane would carry her. That took grit. But Major Penny exuded grit long before she was called to action on 9-11. In order to be ready to respond that day, Major Penny had to endure lots of training. She had to be physically and mentally fit. And she said that she had to fight harder than her male peers to break through the long-standing barriers in her fighter pilot community. Every day that she suited up, she had to have grit. And what has encouraged me most from Major Penny's story is this. Major Penny said that the concept of grit does not come to her naturally. She said that grit is a choice. That grit is something that you and I can choose to have every day. So my hope and my prayer for you is this. Wherever you go next, and whatever God has called you to do, choose to have grit. Rise to the level of your training, of your education, and of your own determination. Let God work through you and always be grateful for your mission. God bless you, class, and congratulations. Thank you, Captain Santiago. Those are very inspiring words and stories. I appreciate that very much. And congratulations, class of 2019. We are so very proud of you, as Dr. Beals and each speaker has said. And before we invite you up onto the stage, which I know you're waiting for, to receive your diplomas, we are excited for you to hear from one of your fellow graduates and business majors, Brian Marsh. And tonight, I have the privilege of introducing Brian to you. Brian hails originally from the state of Kentucky, where he grew up on a farm. It was there that he learned to apply his natural creativity and his deep sense of curiosity to solutions that often seem to challenge the status quo, but always to seek something better and to improve processes along the way. Today, he is very much a goal-oriented visionary. He and his wife, whom he met on a mission trip to South Africa, launched a photography business in 2013. While working to expand that venture, Brian added the responsibility of earning his degree in business at Vanguard University. And he has done that beautifully with the highest of honors, in fact, a perfect 4-0, and that's no small feat, I can tell you that. And now Brian is pursuing a career as a firefighter. Brian is a dedicated husband, a father of two, he is a surfer and outdoorsman as well. He is a talented photographer. I've looked at his website, it's spectacular. He's a successful business owner. He definitely evidence, evidenced his creative and critical and strategic thinking skills and his quantitative reasoning and analytical prowess in the classroom. I know that, I had Brian in class more than once. He's obviously a self-starter and I'm very happy to announce that he has been accepted into the Santa Ana College Fire Academy, where he will begin his training this fall. Please join me in welcoming our very accomplished professional studies student speaker, Brian Marsh. Thank you. Good evening, President Beals, Provost Menjares, to the Board of Trustees, esteemed family, loved ones, faculty, staff, and to the class of 2019, you've earned a major achievement. You deserve another round of applause. Let's give it up. So I assume that since you are here receiving a degree, you are not a complacent kind of people. You strive for greater things. However, 
we must face the realities that life has its shortcomings. So I would like to take this opportunity to give us some encouragement. I'll start with the Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians, where he writes, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. And just before Paul writes this very popular line, he recounts some of the worst and best circumstances he has been in. Through these extremes, he has learned the range of human experience and in that to be content no matter the situation. According to Merriam-Webster, contentment is the feeling or showing of satisfaction with one's possessions, status, or situations. In other words, it's a sort of peace. And this passage is not an endorsement that God will empower us to do whatever or anything. It is an assurance that we can do whatever God calls us to do. It is an encouragement that God will give us the strength to be content no matter what. To be content, we must seek Jesus and rely on his peace and sufficient love for us. Paul's reasons for contentment is directly through his relationship with Christ. In John 16, Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank the Lord. <clears throat> so, seek the one who has overcome the world, because when you get a hold of contentment, your circumstances no longer set the tone for your life. Obviously, life is full of its ups and downs, moments in plenty, and moments of want. Excuse me. Moments in plenty and moments in want. But Jesus is enough. He is sufficient. As I've spoken on the necessity to live a life of contentment, I'm not arguing for a life of complacency. I urge you, graduating class of 2019, to be content in your present circumstances as you pursue greatness in all of your endeavors. For to pursue greatness in the name of Jesus Christ is to glorify his name. Congratulations, class of 2019. Live lives of contentment, seek the Lord, and strive for greatness. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Congratulations also on your acceptance into the Fire Academy. That is wonderful. That, that's right. I hope the graduates feel the love, the support, and the encouragement, because really this day is not only about the Lord, it's about you and all that you've achieved, all that you've worked so hard for. And we want you to know that we are just all so very proud of you. So until you put your head in your pillow tonight, you're going to continue to be loved on uh, all the way through dinner at Applebee's or wherever <laughs> you end up celebrating your uh, graduation this evening. Nice. As provost of the university, I want to also extend congratulations to you and to uh, affirm you as we move into the formality now of presenting you your, your degrees. And to know that you have studied and have shown yourself approved unto God. You have passed the test. And because our faculty have taught you, they have modeled for you the Christian faith, they have entered into your lives through prayer, they've loved you, they've challenged you, they've stretched you, they've tested and examined you, we now know that you are stronger, not only in your faith, but our prayer is that you have learned how to love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength. And so we are all very, very proud of you. And so I will ask the candidates for the associate and baccalaureate degree to please rise. That's you without the hoods. <laughs> there you go. President Beale, standing before you are the students who have completed the requirements listed in the Vanguard University Catalog 
for the degree of Associate of Arts, Bachelor of Arts, or Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and come recommended by the faculty for graduation. I am pleased to present these qualified candidates for the Associate or Baccalaureate degree. Thank you. On the authority vested in me by the University Board of Trustees and by the State of California, I confer upon you the degree of Associate of Arts, Bachelor of Arts, or Bachelor of Science, and admit you to all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. To signify the conferring of your degree, you may now move your tassel from the right to the left. Please be seated, and will the candidates for the associate and baccalaureate degrees come forward as they are escorted. The following students are from the Department of Business. Brian Lewis Marsh. Fong Duong. David Hernandez. Elena Finman. Kimberly Patrice Barnett. Sheila Marie Ruiz. Ellen Renee Rosenau. Tobias DeGood. Irene Reyes Williams. Rafael A. Ayala. Connor Ryan McGrath. Patrick W. Walsh. The following students are from the Department of Early Childhood. Mary Teresa Davison. Rochelle Ainsworth. Monique J. Dees. Nicole Christine Reynolds. Amanda Lee. Jordan Danae Olivo. Elizabeth Ann Fiore. Karen Rose Navarre. Anna Marie de la Cruz. The following students are from the Department of Nursing. Mara Schlein. Haley Fletcher. Richard Samedra. Richard Longo Jr. Cassidy Jeanette Compton. Kristen Liana Ferris. Elizabeth Sarah Coffey. Tiana Louise Barrios. Patrick John Godoy. Melissa Ibai Townsend. Mark Dislate Ojar Castro. 
Idel Hanna. Charlene Adams Harding. Rhonda Margaret Fent. Nicole Jean Wilson. Wei Gao. Paulina Bianca Sagarel. Bin Bin Zhang. Sean Patrick Tobin. Jefferson D. Baron Nuevo. Kurt James. Kimberly Jackson. Jessica Hernandez. Haley Virginia Streeter. Mary Sargisian. Karina Cornejo. Jessica Romero. Haley Shea. Joanna Kolacheska. Katharina Pham. Christopher Jonathan Hara. Amanda Cadwell. Lou Bai. Amy Basie. Shanghai Bai. Unmi Kwak. The following students are from the Department of Psychology. Robert Niederhauser. Sandra Kataike. Sasha Bon Fulmer. Tema Deanne Knight. <laughs> Amanda Crawford. <laughs> Vanessa Lorraine Swam. Christopher Hurtado Flores. Oscar Guillen. Patty Darlene Audivez. Susanna Rodas. Connor Mitchell Weiler. Nicole Palacios. Montserrat Alvarez. Christopher Taylor Brown. Brian Allen Lancioni. Michelle Lee Riggan. Callista Brown. David Cabello. Yeah, sorry, okay. <laughs> Anna Isabel Ramirez Cordero. Thomas Ben Colombo Tachi Jr. The following students are from the Department of Religion. Austin Arthur Akers. Jacob Eugene Osborne. Sage Kiaha. Tyler Judd Spillman. Christopher Martinez. Stephanie Shirley Kerr. Stephanie Garcia. Harry L. Eves.
delighted to introduce our next student speaker. While she's representing all of the graduate programs here at Vanguard, she comes from grad psych. And so, <laughs> so her name is Duna. And three years ago, Duna was working in her home city of Xi'an, China. As the CEO of Agape, which was a nonprofit organization that supports orphans and children with special needs. She had learned English in school and had worked as a translator for a Christian organization that cared for orphanages. You can tell where her heart was. She wrote grants and raised money from Hong Kong, the, thank you, the UK, yes, <laughs> America, Australia. <laughs> Australia <laughs> okay. and China. These services ha that she had pioneered are now widespread in China. Duna's work with children made her aware that mental health was and is significantly under addressed throughout the country of China. So following God's leading she came to America to study clinical psychology in order to take that knowledge back with her to China in the future. With great help from her host family, John and Jennifer Dietz, 
And I believe there's like 60 other people who have come from international and even China to celebrate with Duna. But John and Jennifer Dietz attended our graduate program in clinical psychology at Vanguard, which then helped in preparing her to fulfill her ultimate goals for China. So before coming here three years ago, Duna knew very little about American culture, about graduate school. She did not even know how to drive a car. And today, she's mastered all three. <laughs> As you can tell from my introduction, and soon from her own lips, her speech, Duna is an amazing person who has made a remarkable difference in people's lives because she has followed where God led. China already has been and will continue to be changed because of Duna. And we in grad psych know that to be true as we have personally been changed by her presence in our program. We, we all fell in love with her and we, especially Grad Psych, is excited for you to hear her story. Welcome, Duna. Good evening, President Beals, Provost Mahadans, Board of Trustees, esteemed faculty, staff, loved ones, and class of 2019. This is my first graduation ceremony ever in my life. And I'm honored to share with you some of my stories. When I worked as a CEO at the orphanages in China, I set up different programs to serve those with special needs. One of the young men under our care had psychotic episodes and we sent him to five different doctors and psychiatrists. But those professionals refused to work with him because he was an orphan. I watched our people suffering and I asked God what I could do to support them. God led me to the graduate program in clinical psychology at Vanguard. After I came to America, I was not only challenged by the language and cultural differences, but also overwhelmed by people's support, care, and love. Thank you all so much for being here today to share this achievement with me. The most important people are John and Jennifer Deeds. John is a previous Vanguard Foundation board member. They both love Vanguard and have hosted me during these three years. They didn't only provide a house for me to live in, a car for me to drive, and financial support for my education, but they also studied together with me. There are many psychological terminologies that we don't even have the words for in Chinese. So they spent a lot of time explaining the meanings to me. I would like to take this moment to thank them for their support and love. I would also like to thank my professors and fellow classmates who walked together with me. Grand Psych has equipped me with professional skills and confidence to work with clients. Compared to my practicum psych colleagues from other universities, I can confidently say that we are very well prepared for the field. As an international student, my biggest challenge is that language. I often felt that I was the last one to understand professor's points. But what is unique about our grad psych is that our professor's doors are always open. I could walk in at any time to talk with them. I had made some great friends with some amazing people at grad psych. We studied together, prayed together, fought some great battles together, and enjoyed some fun times. I will treasure these prof amazing professors and classmates for the rest of my life. After my graduation, I will stay in America for a while 
before I return to China. My dream is to set up a private practice and a similar program like Vanguard's Grand Psych in China to provide education for those who, like me, who doesn't have the education uh, opportunity, but they want to develop as a therapist. Of course, this is going to be a tough journey, but I believe if it is God's will, he will make a way. Fifteen years ago, when, when we started the special education and rehab programs in China, there weren't many facilities. Now, special education and rehab programs have become widespread there. So with mental health, I believe it will be the same. I look forward to the day where people in China will be able to seek out mental health services without suffering social stigma and will be able to deal with the issues that affect them individually as families and as a nation. This part of my journey as a student has ended. And I have confidence to start a new journey. This time, I will not be alone. Your friendship and our shared experiences will join me along the way. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. That was wonderful. Well, the candidates for the Master of Arts, Master of Science, and Master of Theological Studies degrees, please rise. President Beal, standing before you are the students who have completed the requirements listed in the Vanguard University Catalog for the degree of Master of Arts, Master of Science, Master of Science in Nursing, and Master of Theological Studies, and come recommended by the faculty for graduation. I am pleased to present these qualified candidates for the master's degree. On the authority vested in me by the University Board of Trustees, and by the State of California, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts, Master of Science, or Master of Theological Studies, and admit you to all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. Congratulations. You may be seated. The graduates receiving their master's degrees will be hooded by the director or associate director of their respective graduate programs. Dr. Jerry White for the Master of Science in Clinical Psychology graduates. Dr. Sylvia Kane for the Master of Arts in Education graduates. Love on Dr. Kane there, that's okay. Dr. Mary Wickman for the Master of Science in Nursing graduate. Why did I have the feeling that was gonna happen? Dr. Lyudmila Praslova for the Master of Science in Organizational Psychology graduates. Dr. Doug Peterson for the Master of Arts in Leadership Studies, Church Leadership, Theology and Master of Theological Studies graduates. Notably, the first cohort of 15 nurses from our off-site program at St. Jude Medical Center in Fullerton are being hooded today. We celebrate this partnership and the accomplishments of all candidates here today. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts, Master of Science, and Master of Theological Studies please come forward as you are escorted.
The following students are from the Graduate Department of Clinical Psychology. Summer Leanna Rodriguez. Christine Marina Freiberg. <laughs> Tiffany Justine Trent. Kelsey Brooke Garcia. <laughs> Carla May Louise Mack. Emily Alicia Mahano. <laughs> Michael P. Dina. Catherine Lee. <laughs> Kristen Nicole Ray. Alexander Timothy Snow. Johnny J. Hepner. Jalisa Brianna Castellian. <laughs> Jennifer Covarrubias. Courtney Michelle Beeler. Woo! 
Data Michelle Briseño. Jake Daniel Stoll. <laughs> Tori Lynn Bishop. Mona Aiken. Thank you. Thank you. I wish that was me. Christy Santana. <laughs> Correction, excuse me. Crystal Santana. Jennifer Nguyen. Janelle Allison Connor. Do not. <laughs> Jessica Adeline Lee. Rachel Lynn Mitchell. The following students are from the Graduate Department of Education. Julie Fleming Sitcherug. Melanie A. Tory. <laughs> Lindsay Elaine Nancy Sullivan. Bethany Finneran. <laughs> Stephanie Fan. Brianna Corinne Vanderwall.
Brianna Lynn Petrarca. Kaylee R. Morrill. Vicky New One. Matthew Walker. Kyle W. Durham. Daryl Manesse. <laughs> Leah Marie Bednar. <laughs> Ali Marie Bostrom. Nathan John Martin Del Campo. The following students are from the Graduate Department of Nursing. Victoria L. Marone. Michiko Otsuka. <laughs> Teresa Kailanen. Charlene Michelle Nadila E. Casas. <laughs> Jordana Rebecca Spangler. Christine Atu. <laughs> Heidi Itri. Marie Reed. <laughs> Rick Rodella. Jessica Marie Durkin. Eve Leon.
Melissa Riley. Susan Elizabeth Patchell. <laughs> Joy LaFranchi. Jacob Miles Pablo. <laughs> Joanne Lardizabel Pung. Cynthia Chun. Yay, Cynthia. Maria Imelda Leopoldo. Janae Marie Mendoza. Jocelyn Uyang Magarin. So Hyun An. The following students are from the Irina Ten. <laughs> the following students are from the Graduate Department of Organizational Psychology. <laughs> Michael Robert Gomez. Dominique Marie Merritt. <laughs> Charity Suzanne Culp. <laughs> Joshua Moon. Stephanie Aceves. Christopher M. Cupids. <laughs> Andrew Lentz. <laughs> Aaron Terrones. Arlene Segura. J. 
Jesse Lee. Lauren Elizabeth Younger. Shane L. Elias Calles. Jared R. Jaime. Melody Janae Reeland Foley. Sarah Hong Eggert. Christina Haugen Porter. Fabiana Zarilla. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Williams. Amory Evans. <laughs> Janae Dion Lee. Gregory Michael Clemens. The following students are from the Graduate Department of Religion. Nathan C. Wasted. <laughs> Daniel M. Toro. Kevin Patrick Kanipa. Katie Heemstra. David Ramirez Sanchez. Peter L. Cower. <laughs> Garrett L. Rodriguez. John Douglas Koshel. <laughs> Sarah Meads. Robin Lynn Garvin. Yeah. 
Joanne Johnson. John Edward Johnson. Garcia. <laughs> Brittany Rose Skiles. <laughs> Kimberly Baldwin Bowie. Sabrina Delsed Cuevas. Christy Semi Lee. Lorena Gardia Parker. <laughs> Lydia Diane Roman. Annette Suarez Moreno. Michael J. Moreno. Luis Odello. <laughs> Daniel De Leon Jr. Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Yun Park.
that just under 20 years ago I sat in your shoes wondering what the Lord had in store for me. You have a unique opportunity today to be a part of Vanguard's history in a very special way. There is a beam outside of the doors that will be going in the new student center and we want you to sign it so that students in the future may know that they are also a part of the Vanguard history and that you prayed for them. Today, you join over 25,000 plus others and become a part of the Vanguard Alumni Association. As president, I want to welcome you as we strive to lead a spirit-empowered life of Christ-centered leadership and service. As you walk away today, Know that the relationships that you built with this community of fellow followers of Jesus can and will be here for you for the rest of your life. Use this powerful alumni network to its fullest. It is filled with talented leaders that span not only this country, but the world. Remember that you are now a part of the Vanguard story and have the opportunity to give back your time, talents, and treasures. Consider asking, how can I assist the next generation of Vanguard students become the leaders that God has called them to be? So as you leave today, my words of encouragement are this from Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. When you walk into a new job for the first time, when you are asked to lead and doubt whether or not you have the right experience, when you face trials, and you will, that seem harder than you can ever imagine. And when big, amazing life things happen, when you celebrate your personal and professional successes, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And as the Lord goes with you and life's joys and trials happen, Keep in touch with us. We want to hear what's happening. We want to pray for you, and we want to rejoice with you. I wish you blessings on this great day. Your story is the Vanguard story. And now, without further ado, I officially welcome you to the Vanguard Alumni Association. Let's stand together as we sing together, Hail to the Golden Blue, the alma mater, Vanguard University.
Family and friends, would you join me in congratulating these graduates one more time? God bless you folks. Congratulations. Outstanding. We're going to bring our ceremony to a close with the uh, benediction and recessional. And the benediction is being brought uh, forward by uh, a, f a dear friend of mine and a man who, um, whose heart of compassion, whose heart for the marginalized, whose heart to see people not only just saved and in heaven, but on this side of eternity for their lives to be changed for the better and for their lives to be, uh, for those that are at the margins to be reached. It is really my priv uh, privilege to ask Reverend John Johnson to come, uh, who is just hooded here in this ceremony, to come and give our, our benediction. As he does, family, we want you to know your graduates will be waiting for you on the lawn across from the entrance of the worship center, and the last page of your program has additional details about the uh, reception area. So, Reverend John Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Bless you. Love you. Praise the Lord. Could you bow your heads with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come into your presence with heartfelt gratitude for who you are and all that you have done in our lives. There is no God like you. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The scriptures declare that every good gift comes from you. So we acknowledge that all we have accomplished is because of you, O oh God. And Father, we thank you that you have revealed your love to us today. We thank you for everyone who has helped us to arrive at this significant moment. Lord, we lift this graduating class before you. Thank you for the work you are continuing to do in all of our lives. We would ask that you would strengthen us and instill hope as we journey the new roads you have prepared before us. Guide our steps. Be a lamp for our feet and a light to our path. We pray for your protection for wisdom, and that you would give us understanding beyond our years. Lord, remind us every day how very much you love us, and may we find our security and confidence fully in you, knowing that you are trustworthy and true. Help us always to be mindful of your promise to never leave us or forsake us, but to be with us forever. We ask that you would allow every gift and treasure you have placed inside our lives to grow, develop, and flourish in order to bring you the glory. Raise up great 